Okay. Um, good evening and welcome to the April 25th, 2023 meeting of the Stowe Select Board. Um, in the room with me this evening, I have Ingeborg Hageman clark Courtney Fresha. Um, on Zoom, we have Ellen Sturgis, Hector Costanzas, and our town administrator, Denise Demkowski. Um, I will open the meeting up for public comment, um, and that is anyone who has a comment to make that is not on the agenda this evening. Um, again, I ask you to limit comments to two minutes. Please state your name and your address. Um, and uh, that is it. Uh, and Ms. Woods? Um, Debbie Woods, Great Road. It's more of a question. There's been some new chit chat chatter about bows and um, of what is happening, not happening. And I was just um, curious if you could provide us an update as to what's the status of the bows property. Sure. I cannot do that because I don't know. There's no change. <laughs> There's no change. <laughs> so any idea what the... A There's no the change. Name? That's all I can say. There was no change. It's still owned by Bose. Okay. Uh, and you have a hand raised. Yes, sure. Um, Mark? Yes. Uh, I just wanted to say to Alan Sturgis, I don't know if he'll be seeing you again. I know you're uh, uh, leaving us, and I want to thank you for your service and your time. I uh, appreciate all you've done for the town, and just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, Mark. I'll be at town meeting. And we have another meeting to go. Another meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody else? All right. Um, board member comments. Any board member comments? Don't all speak at once. All right, I got... Four nods no, so we're going to move on to the town administrator's report. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, as of April 20th, Stowe has six cases of COVID uh, with an 8.51% positivity rating. And please note, with the end of the state of emergency approaching, the state will no longer providing us these numbers on a weekly basis. So this will be my last report oh. on the number of COVID cases in town. Um, the... Library Building Committee received revised estimates on the library project a few weeks ago. Uh, the project has come in at an estimated $2 million more than we authorized at town meeting. Mm -hmm. So we are actively looking at, we're still in the schematic design, we're entering design development now. Um, next Wednesday, May 3rd, the two library building committees will be reviewing design options for the exterior of the new addition. If folks would like to offer some public input, look at the options that are being presented, we'd welcome you to join. Uh, meeting is accessible in person on the third floor of this building or on Zoom. The information is on our website. <clears throat> um, Jeff Hall of Storybook Tree has donated a tree to the Tree Warden for Arbor Day. Um, and those of you who don't know, the Tree Warden has very broad authority over trees on public lands, and he has identified the Upper Common as the ideal location for the new tree with the aging oaks and maples. Um, he'd like to see some newer trees growing to eventually take their place someday. Um, so if it's not there already, um, a tree will be planted this week. So I would like to thank Jeff Hall for the donation and to our tree warden, Bruce Fletcher, for always being proactive and responsible when it comes to our public trees. Um, and lastly, I would like to thank the police and fire departments and our surrounding public safety agencies and the Mass State Police for their prompt response last night after we received reports of a missing woman in the town forest. Uh, thankfully, after about an hour and a half, she was found safe. But we had quite a response. Everyone showed up, and um, luckily it was a happy ending. So thank you to everyone who showed up last night on behalf of uh, the town of Stowe. That's it. That's it. All right. Um, then we are moving on to our first agenda item, um, which is the... Collings Foundation American Heritage Museum 2023 events. Um, do we have a representative on? Yes. Great. Oh, I see Hunter. Hey. Hello. Hi. Evening, everyone. Good evening. How are you? Good. Doing well. Excellent. Um, what is the best way to take this? Just well, so if I may, yeah. um, I met with uh, Robin Hunter a couple months ago to talk about their <clears throat> events for the year. Um, I thought it was best that we put them forward since they know which weekends and what events they would be having to put them forward as one sort of approval instead of having to schedule around everyone's 
timing. So, um, so these are the events that they have put forward um, for 2023. If other events come up, they'll come before us to um, ask for our permission under the settlement agreements for those events. But um, these ones are fairly the standard events that they've had, um, May 27th and 28th tank demo, June 17th and 18th wings and wheels, um, July 8th and 9th tank demo, um, August 12th and 13th centuries of the soldier, September 16th and 17th World War I and early aviation weekend, and October 7th and 8th World War II battle for the airfield. Um, I've noted which ones are how they fall under the agreements, which ones will have pyrotechnics, gunfire, flying, tanks, et cetera. Um, we sent this out to the departments, um, provided that they continue to go before the um, fire department when they need their uh, respective pyrotechnic events. No one had any concerns. Um, so I think I would ask you to approve of their events. Obviously, okay. if they have any comments or anything else they'd like to offer on it, but um, I think it's, much, it's a much smoother process this way. Yep. Yep. Hunter, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, that's uh, that's all accurate, and it looks good. We're looking forward to a, a beautiful spring and summertime, and uh, yeah, should be great. Excellent. Um, and Rob is on too. Just so you okay. Know. Um, Rob, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, just uh, thank you, Denise. This was uh, definitely a smooth way to do it, um, especially since the. Schedule is pretty much the same as last year. Um, to get it out of the way early is, is a great idea. Great. Yeah, thank you. Ellen has a uh, yeah. um, Ellen? Yeah, just two really quick questions. One is I actually totally agree, and thank you, Denise and, and Hunter and Rob, for doing this, getting all the dates out in front, because I, I guess one of my questions is, is that the best way to let the, the neighbors know just so they can plan ahead now? I mean, they can plan right through the fall right. um, what's going on if they want to get out of town if it gets too loud or whatever. <laughs> um, and, and then, and I can't remember, I mean, if you had two events in September and October, you know, I just always think about apple season and, I know there's always the the Columbus Day, I think it's Columbus Day weekend, the 7th, 8th, whatever that weekend is. But um, I just worry about the traffic issues around the having September and October. Did you do that last year as well? Am I just forgetting they were that close? Yes. Yeah, the uh, October event we've had since 2007, I believe. Right. Yeah. But the entry road in Hudson has totally changed the dynamic of the traffic flow. Yeah, right. So it doesn't really interfere at all with the Apple Orchard. We do appreciate it. So. Great. Very busy weekend for them. Yeah, certainly. But that's right. I, and, and that that entrance off of um, Barton Road is, or yeah, Barton is totally closed off now, right? You yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Great. No, I'm really grateful that you put the whole schedule together. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Hector. Nothing. What's that? Okay. No, no Hector, not Hunter. Sorry, <laughs> I was calling for Hector. Um, do you have anything? I just wanted to say thank you for for breaking down, you know, what's happening at each one. It's just, I find it very clear. Yeah. It's really useful. Yeah. And it is, to, to Ellen's point, um, yes, you know, I've already talked to the police department that they can use that to put it out on social media mm -hmm. so that we can we can do our part to notify the, the uh, residents as well of when mm -hmm. they're having events mm -hmm. um, yeah. if they don't know the standard weekends. Yep. <laughs> Great. Anyone? No, nothing. No? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, any further questions or comments? I will take a motion. Madam Chair, I move to approve the 2023 schedule of events for the American Heritage Museum as presented by the Collings Foundation with Second. no further stipulations. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Um, any further discussion from the board? Um, seeing none, all in favor? Ms. Sturgis? Aye. Mr. Costanzas? Aye. Ms. Segman clark Aye. Ms. Russia? Aye. And the chair votes aye, so that's unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, I'm glad we've got all this on the schedule. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for coming in, guys. Thanks. Have a good night. Thank you, you as well. Me too. <clears throat> all right. We have Fire Captain Barry Evers here with us this evening to talk to us about putting in some fire protection cisterns. Um, uh, so a while ago, uh, we have received the offer funds, um, and I'm moving to forward with the uh, 
construction phase of installing a few of the cisterns and one of them was on Conan Drive. And I've put a, lot, put a good amount of work into it up until right now under the impression that the land that I wanted to put it on was owned by the um, uh, uh, Conservation Commission. Uh, come to find out, it belongs to the town of Stowe. And I'm just <laughs> looking for authorization to be able to, uh, to move forward with the project. All right. Um, fantastic. Thank you. Um, does anyone from the, do you want to say? Well, something? I just, do you want to talk about 511 Great Road and 380 as well? Because we put them on here to. Uh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Uh, so I can talk about 511 Great Road. Um, mm -hmm. So the, we have a, a spot picked out that's in the entrance to the fire station. Mm -hmm. um, we think it would be really good there. It would benefit um, all the addresses um, uh, along Great Road. In addition to that, we'd be able to use that for, uh, to train our firefighters. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's very important. Um, and as well as the one at 380 Great Road here, um, centralized population right here. There's some pretty important buildings right here. <laughs> I don't need to tell anybody about. Um, be greatly beneficial to us to help protect. Do you have anything you want to say? <laughs> yes, please. Um, so the maps that the captain provided that are in your packet, it mm -hmm. shows sort of a green line. That's the basic coverage area. Mm -hmm. um, so it shows um, what would benefit, what residents and properties would benefit from these cisterns. Mm -hmm. um, the cistern proposal for this property at 380, um, it will depend on the final location as some of the property in this facility is owned by Conservation Commission. So I'm having uh, you vote it, provided that you are <laughs> the authority that controls that. Otherwise, he'd have to go before the Conservation Commission. Okay. But figured we get these first three out of the way okay. um, so that he can con continue with this project and go forward with some permitting and um, proposals. Sounds great. Any questions? Hector. Uh, and once again, being new to this, I'm not quite sure. I totally support the cisterns. I've just wanted to know what is involved. Are we talking about sticking a pipe into the wetlands so the, the fire department can draw from the water there or what, <clears throat> what exactly is going to happen? So we have, uh, what would happen is um, it's, an, it's an excavation project and um, a, it's called a tunnel tank and it's a very large tank that's sunk into the ground and the tank holds 30,000 gallons of water. Um, and we'd be able to, instead of drafting out of it um, what you're describing would be like a lake or a pond. We would use that water um, in that tank for fire suppression. And where would the water come from for those tanks? When the water is, when the tank is first installed, the contractor will fill it with pool water, for example. Um, and then anything after that, once, if we use the water for fire suppression, um, we, we'd have to replace it with water we use in the fire trucks. It would be up to us to mm -hmm. figure that out. Thanks. Great. Do you guys have any more questions? No. Do you have questions? Yeah. As the conservation. <laughs> yeah. So why can't the tanks be somewhat porous so that groundwater can filter into them? Because if groundwater can get into them, that means other stuff can get into it as well. Yeah. So we'd be looking at things like debris, dirt. Yeah. Um, you'd have um, aquatic vegetation growing in it as well. And that's... Um, real difficult thing for us to maintain. Right. Um, so with this, it's clean water, it's in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we use it, we're just, we're just able to replace it. It's nice and easy. Okay. All right. Any question. question. Yeah. And then with the groundwater, we would be, there would be no guarantee that there would be water in there when we needed it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so you'll go and get a permit from the commission as... Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. Because there's a general permit that the commission has for this kind of work. Absolutely. Right. Yep. Yeah. Good. Okay. Cool. That's all I had. Courtney? Good. All right. Um, I don't have any questions. Um, so I am ready to take a motion. Do you want separate motions for these? Or, or? Yeah, I think we need to. Oh, I think we can take one motion for Conant Drive and 511 Great Road and yep. then a second motion for the other one. Great. That would be great. Thank you. I move to approve the installation of fire protection cisterns at the locations listed below according to plans presented by the fire department officials at this meeting and provided all necessary permits are received. Conant Drive across from numbers 31 and 35 and 511 Great Road. Second. 
All right, any further discussion, questions? Seeing none, all in favor, Ms. Sturgis? Aye. Mr. Costanzas? Aye. Ms. Eggman-Clark? Aye. Ms. Russia? Aye. And the chair votes aye, so that's unanimous. And I move to approve the installation of a fire protection cistern at 380 Great Road, provided installation is on land under select board control. Otherwise, approval from the landowner must be received. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Ms. Sturgis? Aye. Mr. Costanzas? Aye. Ms. Eggman clark aye. Ms. Fresha? Aye. And the chair votes aye, so that's unanimous. I want to say thank you again um, to Captain Evers. Very this welcome. is fantastic. Um, I'm glad that we were able to, that Representative Hogan was able to get the money for the cisterns Absolutely. and that we were able to, to do this. It's going to be uh, life changing for the town. It so is. No, it's, it's, it. it's fantastic. Literally. And, yes, uh, literally. Know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fantastic. And if anybody has any further questions or discussion about it, please feel free to reach out to me. Fantastic. I could talk about it all day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Have a great well. evening. Um, all right. So, next on the agenda, we have an event permit for Exhale Fest on Saturday, May 20th. Uh, and I believe, did I see Hello. Jennifer's on? Yes. yes. yes Hello, am. how are you? Thank you. Thanks for coming Thank this you. evening. Thank you. Um, Adrian is here too. We've been working together. Oh, fantastic. Um, as well. So Adrian Adams, if she can on me, there she is. Okay, great. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about this? What you're planning? Sure, yeah. Um, on Saturday, the uh, May 20th, we've been um, pretty excited about offering something like this. We wanted to en enjoy the spring weather and have an outdoor and indoor festival at, U at uh, Exhale. And um, we're going to be having like a small group of vendors outside in our fenced-in property um, beside the building on 23 Gleasondale there, behind the building. Um, and they'll be selling like different arts and crafts or wellness products and kind of going with the wellness and the arts and crafts and, um, we'll make it this kind of, uh, theme. Um, and then indoors, we're going to have like a, a ticketed event, um, where we'll be having little demonstrations and workshops about some of the services that we have at Exhale, like yoga and massage. Excellent. Um, did Adrian want to say, have anything to say? Adrian? No, that pretty much covers it, to be honest. Excellent. <laughs> um, great. Um, do any board members have any questions? Hector. Hector? And Helen both have their hands yep. raised. So, Hector? I noticed that on the permit, it says that, um, for the event details, that there would be food concession and food preparation, but the food trucks are canceled. Where would the food be prepared and who will be serving it? Yeah, yeah. Um, after I did meet with the fire police um, at, on the, they came to see the site. We had a talk with them. But even before then, we decided against the food truck option um, because of space. And so we are um, going to have just some, like, light lunch food snacks from a um, catering company business um, with where there'd be pre, um, like, prepackaged, mm -hmm. like, little sandwiches and things that are prepackaged that people can, can purchase. Great. Um, Thank you very much for doing this. Mm -hmm. um, Ellen? So I don't have a question. I just want oh. to say I got to go there recently for a private party, and the place is amazing. Is Jenna, it? your team are incredible. So I yeah. encourage people to stop by and check it out. Yeah. Oh, thank it's you. Beautiful. That's nice. great. Thank you. Yeah, we're hoping to, you know, well, and have our you know, people who are already familiar with the studio and maybe some other, you know, new people, um, yeah. you know, to be introduced to it. So we're looking forward to it. It's a family event, too, so people can bring their family. Excellent. <laughs> We're going to have a pretty awesome face painter there. <laughs> um, I had a question um, myself. It, you have overflow parking, I was seeing, um, across the street, so you've cleared that with, is, is that 
Well, I'm assuming you've cleared that with the property owner. Um, yeah, we oh, yeah, reached yeah. out to the property Perfect. owner there, and um, the when I spoke to the um, police and fire, they had suggested maybe a police detail for crossing the street. Mm -hmm. So um, we agreed to that as well. Great. Great. Um, you don't really know how many people are going to come. I know. It's so, trust me, it's always the thing, planning an event, right? You've, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have no idea. It could just be us there. <laughs> and Ellen, maybe. I don't um, know. <laughs> Did you guys? <laughs> but hopefully not. I think it's yeah. going to be a success. There's a lot of. Well, hopefully, it'd be a beautiful day, and people yeah. think it's a fun thing to do. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I want to second what Ellen said. It's you. The you have done a beautiful job with that space. It is, it is a lovely space inside, and so Thank congratulations. You. Um, yeah. any questions? Not for me. No. no. All right. No. Then I'm ready for a vote. I'm ready for a motion. Yeah. <laughs> I move to grant a permit for Exhale Fest on Saturday, May 20th, 2023, from 12 noon until 5 p.m. at 23 Gleasondale Road. Second. All right. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, Ms. Sturgis. Aye. Mr. Costanzas. <coughs> Ms. Hageman clark Aye. And Ms. Fresha. Aye. And the chair votes aye, so that's unanimous. Thank you very much. I hope and you have great you weather all. and great attendance, and it's a lot great of fun. fun. <laughs> well, Thank you. We'll see you there, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> have a good night. Thanks. Thank you. Good night, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. We're moving on to charter review articles for the town meeting. Hold on. I'm going to take a look this up. All right. Who wants to kick May this I? off? May <laughs> I? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I asked um, Debbie as chair of the Charter Review Committee to be here tonight. I think, um, you know, while these are some of the less controversial articles that the Charter is putting forward, I think it's important for residents to just hear about them um, mm -hmm. before they go into town meeting. Sure. What You know, I know that their meetings have been public, but ours get much more attention. So I, I thought it would be good for her to run through the articles that's being proposed and just give you a little rundown as to, you know, why they're moving these ones forward just for folks to hear about it before Great. town meeting. Um, thank you, Denise. The other question is, um, do you also, are you interested in hearing either the process we've gone through and or the process that we will be going through at town meeting? Or I can just jump right to the articles. I'll leave it up to the board. What do you want to hear? I think we kind of know the process. I think we know the process because I think we had a couple meetings with it, or I feel comfortable with that. But, um, but if there's something unusual about how you're going to do the town meeting, then sure. If it's just your regular presentation, then we kind of know the drill. But okay. Well, I, it's, I do think it's important for the town to realize, first of all, this is part one of two parts. Mm -hmm. So what, what they'll see in May is not the end. It's just the beginning. The other thing is each article will be discussed. Each article will be voted on. Mm -hmm. Only those articles that pass by a majority will then go to the Attorney General. The Attorney General has to review them to make sure they're legal and everything. Those that are also approved by the Attorney General will then go on the ballot in probably May of 2024. Okay. Those that pass that hurdle, pass at the ballot they then become part of the charter. Got it. So it's a multiple step hurdle that we have to we have to follow. So okay. town meeting is just one step with others to follow. So that I just want to make sure everybody understood yeah, that's, that. That's that's great. That's great. Um, in terms of the articles, we are bringing forth. Where are we bringing forth? We are bringing forth. We are bringing forth one, two, three, five articles, mm -hmm. articles 56 through 60, mm -hmm. and article 56 is changing the various combinations of selectmen, select man, select board of selectmen to the term that was passed by town meeting two years ago. Mm -hmm. So all of that has been taken out and we're not printing it because it impacts like every page of the charter. Mm -hmm. um, but do know that we have that um, article 56 to make sure that um, it follows what the town has requested. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Article 57 is um, one of the things we heard, and we, we received over 90 requests from citizens, town officials, town boards and committees for changes and comments to the charter. One of the changes we heard was that people did not feel the 90-day um, requirement prior to the warrant was fair for a citizen's petition. They felt it was too restrictive. So one of the things we have done is we are recommending that the dates for a citizen's petition follow along with dates for everybody else, whether it's a border committee or a citizen's petition. So that's what Article 57 does. It just puts it in line with other boards and committees. Mm -hmm. Not to... Um, and, it, yeah, mm -hmm. the citizen then has the ability to do whatever they need to, but um, they follow along with... They follow along with everybody else. Sure. Article 59 is... 58. Oh, I'm sorry, 58. This is mainly regarding the school committees. One of the things we realized when we were reading the charter is it talked about a school committee, a school committee, a school committee. We have two. We have Neshoba and we have Minuteman. Mm. So some of it was just clean up to, instead of saying A, it says any. We also wanted to make sure that if for some reason a third school committee popped up, that we're covered for that. So we didn't want to just say two or we didn't want to name them. Mm -hmm. um, so the main, that's kind of the first thing. That's um, um, that's part of it. The other thing is we were struggling with the, re the Neshoba Regional Agreement was still in flux. And they are changing when the term starts and when the term ends of a school committee. So when we were reading through the charter, we kind of realized that if that um, regional agreement came into play, the charter kind of overruled it and it just made life a little messy. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing, mm -hmm. the change we're recommending is if there's a regional agreement, that holds. If it doesn't, standard, um, standard town policy holds. So that's 3-1-C. Um, I'm sorry, the, the multiple school committees is uh, Section 3.3. 3. The other one, Section 3-1-F2, um, clarifies mass, um, it clarifies the about a vacancy in an elected multiple member body. Rather than state what we're going to do, what we're choosing to do is reflect general law. Because what happens if we say... You know, it has to be on a rainy Tuesday, and it's five people. If that, if mass law changes, then the charter is now not mm -hmm. okay. So by just referencing um, mass general law, we feel it's just a cleaner, a cleaner way to do it, mm -hmm. and hopefully less changes to the charter in the future. Okay, mm -hmm. that's fifty eight. Fifty nine is changing the board of assessors from elected to appointed. Um, we had a lot of discussions about this and including with the um, with the Board of Assessors. Unlike many other elected positions, the assessors has a fairly rigorous certification that every board of that every member of the Board of Assessors must go through. We're struggling with that requirement. It's not happening right now. So um, a lot of times what happens is when candidates run for the Board of Assessors, they don't realize that the certification training is required. So therefore, it's kind of like, uh-oh. Um, other reasons people run is they feel that they have the authority to lower their tax rate. No can do. That's not, that's not part of the board. The other thing, and it's a little sad to say, is there's a couple of um, a couple of um, positions, and board of assessors tends to be that where family members write in names, and it's not really something that we want to have it be, you know, kind of a catch-all for just write in a name. So the um, so the rec recommendation is that the board the board of assessors will still remain at three folks. But that it would be appointed by the um, appointed by the select board. The other change that goes along with that is we now had to move everything about the board of assessors from an elected position to an appointed position. And what we've done is the powers and duties remain the same. We just did a cut and paste and moved it from um, elected to appointed. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And then 60 is just the um, kind of the cleanup for representation of, you know, today's um, representation of um, where is it? Where is the, um, whoop, here we go, gender change. So it just makes sure, I think we only had one, when we went through the, the charter, there was only one chairman. And that has now been eliminated to just say chair. But again, it's just to bring it up to date to make sure that everything is um, is gender neutral. Mm -hmm. Great. That's, great. That's that. Questions? Excellent. Ankeborg. I have a question. You're the first one. <clears throat> With respect to the uh, elected versus appointed, mm -hmm. the, uh, the positive pros that you identified sound good. Is there any downside to appointing officials as opposed to electing them? Not that we have heard, because part of the record, like right now, it's three members, and if the three members are not certified, we have issues with signatures not being valid, we have issues with tax rate not being certified. By having it be appointed, those folks that would come before you, one of the requirements would be that they have to be already certified so that it would be it would be right in place. We've not heard any any negatives. The the current board would stay in place because again, we're not going to be even taking anything into effect until spring of 24. So we still have a whole nother year and then the board would figure out either, you know, what they would do with the current members, whether they would be appointed or whether they'd be a whole whole appointing. So Ingmar, we have not we've not heard any any negative, just all positive. Yeah, I can definitely see the positive. I just know that sometimes political appointments have a downside, but it also mm -hmm. sounds like this is not political. It's a qualification. It's a qualification. Mm -hmm. And the other the other thing is there are towns that don't even have a board. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's three flavors. There's elected, there's appointed, and there's none. And we just felt that it's good to have the board, but that, yes. Okay, thank you. And it's, it's really the certification is what's, is what's really driving it. Okay. Okay. Jace? Um, and I would just like to comment that um, the Department of Revenue is actually recommending elected boards of assessors change to appointed. So they've been going out and doing evaluations of communities, and it's for exactly the reasons that Debbie articulated, that there is a certification process, tax rates are not being set timely, um, forms are not being certified because the signatures are not valid. Um, you know, if we had three elected officials that were all certified, it'd be great, but in the years that we don't, or the years that people don't pull papers to run, we are scrambling, um, and, it, and it has become a problem across the state. So one of the recommendations from the DOR is that towns consider making their Board of Assessors appointed versus elected. Thank you. And, you know, the other reality is people don't like to run for office. So it, it, it you know, <laughs> it, we don't have to say it in this room. It, it, so it, it makes that pool even smaller. And as Denise said, there are times that we've had zero, yeah. and write-ins have one, and that's, that's tough. That's yeah. tough. Um, Hector? Yep. Yeah, I just wanted to verify you said that sure? nobody could be no. appointed to this sure. unless they were already certified. So no. the expectation is they would go through the certification first? No, that is that is a that is a requirement that the, the board could put, for example. They could say, you know, as part of the call it the job posting or job description, that certification either was required or had to be done within a certain period of time. That's up to you. You have, as the appointing authority, you would have the ability to say whatever you'd like. Yep. That was just an example. Ellen, did you have anything? Yeah, I, um, and this is maybe more for Denise, but I, I think there have been discussion, or maybe it's current because of the lack of people on the board, that, that our assessor, our, our staff assessor is also considered and could be potentially, I just basically want to make sure if that's been the, the way to sort of solve this current problem, that that would be allowed under the new appointment process, yeah. that our the paid assessor could also be one of the... So I don't, um, Debbie, did you put a requirement that they must be a registered voter? Correct. The, we, that, was one of the re, that was one of the changes that was requested. But after lots of conversation among the, the committee as well as other people, we chose not to bring that forward. Part of, um, we just felt that, you know, we can solve the problem of not having 
certifi- certified people by having it appointed with certified people. We know there are people in town who are, are currently certified who could step in. They just choose not to run. So we know there is a, you know, for lack of a better term, a stable of, of folks to choose from, but we are not, we are not recommending having the um, main assessor be part of the board or we're, we're not recommending. We did not move forward with that recommendation. So can I ask a follow-up? Yep. So actually, I don't see language in here that says it must be a registered voter, which would mean that it would be up to... It's in the, the charter, per se. The charter, the charter is saying... The charter says all committee members must be registered voters. So that just carries through. Yeah. That so, goes through with all boards. So then we could have it as part of the job description or something, so it was clear when... Right, that's up to posting. you. That will be up mm-hmm. to you to determine what you want from an assessor right yeah. right that's what i was going to just that was my follow-up i think courtney if if i heard you right that that the posting can can add whatever other restrictions we want whether they be registered i mean um, certified in advance or correct i don't know what and not a staff member i mean if we decided that that's what we want to do but that that's that's still our the board uh, board's prerogative after the charter gives us the structure, right? Correct. You are the appointing authority, and you can make that job description up. <clears throat> Correct. Okay. <clears throat> can I just get a refresher? I, I remember a discussion about having um, the staff member, the, the um, hired assessor, mm-hmm. as part of the board, mm-hmm. and I don't recollect sort of the details of why mm-hmm. it would be desirable or undesirable to have. <sighs> we had a long discussion about it and part of it is there are other boards in town in in that have a staff member that are not part of the board so we wanted consistency the other feeling was that when you're talking about a board of three you have a quorum of two Hmm. if now you you're the head assessor I'm on the board I want to talk to you. I can't. Mm-hmm. Open meeting. Right. So, and it's these these nuances that came up when we're talking about it. It's like, oh. So that was the other reason. But we mm. did not want to set the precedence. We wanted to follow other boards that staff members were not part of the board. Mm-hmm. And with a board of three, it gets challenging. So those were the two main reasons we chose not to. Mm-hmm. Great reasons. Okay. Hector. Yep, Hector. I'm moving off of the assessors and just the go into the announcement portions. I noticed that the change was from bulletin board and newspapers to bulletin board website and any other appropriate way. Why was website specified and not just left off? <laughs> that whole issue of posting, we've kicked the can to the fall. So we just did not have the time to do everything we needed to do for that. When you look at the charter, it it there is a there is a um, the beginning of the charter. There is a definition of the posting or the building. I forget what it's called, but we will be relooking at the whole posting of what what's the official place, who's the official poster, newspapers, not newspapers for the fall. So you'll see that again. I think oh. he's referring to three one f two where you added in one week prior on the town website, official bulletin board, and elsewhere. I think that's what you're referring to, Hector, right? That's correct. So one more time then, Hector, your question. Why did you add the town website, I think is what he was asking. Because everybody's been pounding on us to put the website in. (laughs) (laughs) Let's put it out there. So will it change again when you look at it again in the phone? Potentially. Okay. You know, again... What, we're, what we've tried to do is when we've gone in a section, we've tried to fix the section that we think either the change or what change is coming down the pike. But like I said, that whole posting, you think it's very simple. It's not been a simple conversation. So that will be, that will be brought up in the fall. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? No? Okay. All right. Debbie, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you for the team. And thank you for going through. I know. That's a lot. That's a lot. Little did we know. (laughs) All right. 
We are going to move on to discuss dates for special town meeting and special town election and to open the warrant for the 2023 special town meeting <laughs> before we have our May town meeting. All right, Denise. So, um, as I mentioned in the memo in your packet, um, I met with um, town administrators from Bolton and Lancaster as well as the superintendent um, over a week ago now to talk about the special town meeting and election required for the high school project. Um, based on the dates required for a school vote and based on the current practice of when town meetings and elections are held, um, we sort of all talked through our options. Um, I, I believe after the conversation that Stowe would be the only one that would have a more robust special town meeting. Um, we have some charter changes. We have potentially more zoning changes. Mm -hmm. um, and so it makes more sense for us to keep on the Saturday as we've now been doing mm -hmm. for several years. Um, I'll be honest, the other two towns do not normally do a Saturday, but we'll both consider doing a Saturday for just this if it's one, if they're only having one or two articles. Um, and then we discussed the election. Um, the other two towns would not change from their standard Monday night or Monday election. Um, and after the conversation with the superintendent, he would not close the schools to allow us to our polling place, the center school. Um, and I've told him that we just can't make it work to have an election while school is up and running. So uh, we would have to stick with a Saturday election. Um, so after talking with the town clerk, um, we looked at these dates. Um, the other two towns, we all sort of agreed that this was the date range. I will add a caveat that I learned yesterday. And I'll be honest, I am ignorant when it comes to this because I don't know the traditions. Uh, but Saturday, September 16th falls in Rosh Hashanah. So I don't know if that impacts. I don't know what the celebration is. It begins sundown on the 15th and goes until the 17th. I don't know if that impacts anything, but I did just find that out yesterday. Um, one of the concerns is, so right now the date, it had to be by September 20th that we hold the town meeting, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, so if we did the we couldn't even do that. We'd have to go earlier. We would have to do a special town meeting on September 9th mm -hmm. with an election on the 16th. Um, and quite frankly, that's the week of Labor Day. Kids are just getting, I mean, I don't know how that would be. So that's why we sort of stayed away from the 9th as a possible date. Um, and if we, we couldn't do a week later because then that falls after the September 20th mm -hmm. deadline. But given that it's such a quick turnaround time, um, Initially, we were not expecting sort of an early September town meeting. Mm -hmm. And based on the conversation we just had about citizens' petition, the citizens' petition deadline is June 20th, which gives folks barely any time after annual town meeting if they want to submit something. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get um, the dates. Now, we always could change them again, mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to get the dates so that people could start planning for yep. public hearings and citizens' mm -hmm. petitions and all that, whatever might come forward, because right. um, it really does not give us a lot of time after the annual town meeting to turn around articles for the fall. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we stand. I'm not sure. Um, I have not talked to the other two towns um, to see if they were looking at uh, changing their date, but you'll see I included right in there the email based on the conversation that um, they're still considering their Monday night, their regular Monday night, so... Um, they may both just move to Monday, um, the, which would be Monday the 18th, and then their vote would be the following week. Um, obviously, the school ideally would like all three towns to be voting on the same day, um, but they have accepted the fact that it's probably not going to happen given the way our towns um, and when our towns coordinate our specific events. When, um, can I ask a quick question? When, um, are, where are Bolton and Lancaster's polling places, if not at the schools? So... Lancaster, I'm not entirely sure. Bolton is the high school, but they have a separate entrance, and it does oh, not yeah. impact yeah. the educational portion. Yeah. I mean, ours is the cafetorium, it, right. Um, right. and quite frankly, the parking at center does not allow for school. Even with the parent-teacher conferences for last year's primary, it caused it created an issue with us mm -hmm. um, trying to get people in to vote when we had other activities going on at the school. Right. right. Okay. Questions or comments? So. I, not to interrupt you. Um, so we certainly could wait another meeting if you want to sort of digest this, but I really don't want to push it off too far, again, just because we have such a tight timeline. Yeah. <clears throat> 
Well, the digestion is um, Labor Day, or we wait a whole week. Or, so here's the question, just remind us, we, we have had elections during the school day. And is that not, yeah. Oh, we haven't had town meeting during the school day. We've had elections during the school day. Is there any way we could do a town meeting at the Pombo building? Not like town meeting? I, well, I, town meeting isn't the issue because if we're, the question on town meeting would be if we're not going to hold it on a Saturday, we'd have to hold it on a weeknight. Um, and then the schools are still available, but then we'd have to go back to a, maybe a traditional Monday night. Um, and well, then depending on... Because you're the concern about Rosh Hashanah on September 16th. But that would be town meeting right? on a Saturday. So could the town meeting go to the Pompo building? It could. I think the... But that wouldn't be the concern the if concern it's still... The people it's don't the date. come because, of, because it's Rosh Hashanah. Not that, not that Rosh Hashanah is going to be celebrated at the I'm school. I'm saying this question wrong. Oh. I'm saying the question wrong. I'm sorry. That's okay. You're, you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, Can so we, we could look at a weeknight for a town meeting. Um, is that something that would be digestible on a Monday night if it's not like a... Like, I think the reason we've moved to Saturday town meetings other than COVID and keeping it there is because it's been such a full meeting that the thought of doing it on a Monday night is like, or two nights is a lot. But if it's going to be. Well, and also because people with children couldn't necessarily come. Right. I thought that was the other major. That was the other issue. So both Hector and Ellen have comments. Okay. Uh, Ellen. So. Um, I, I do have a real concern about it being on, that is the first day of Rosh Hashanah, the first full day. So I, I really think that Saturday would be disrespectful to, to have it on that day, unfortunately. Um, since it, I mean, to, to what you were just saying, Megan, it is a shorter agenda than a usual town meeting. So I don't think it would go more than one night. So, you know, I think we should consider at least maybe Monday, given the, the mm -hmm. various constraints we're dealing with, mm -hmm. um, and, and then my question, um, sort of, sort of what Ingeborg was getting to, but can we do the election at at Pompo? I mean, especially for and not, I wouldn't do it for a presidential, and and Linda will probably kill me right now, but um, <laughs> but for a smaller election, it a smaller, a focused non-state or or federal election, it seems like we might be able to manage an election at Pompo. This is sort of a question. So in previous conversations, um, she has said no, uh, the room is not big enough to have the two separate polling locations and ample parking for the workers and the voters. I keep forgetting we have two precincts. Right. Okay. Never mind that. So, so I just, I, I, I think that we should consider a Monday night for town meeting, um, given Rosh Hashanah. I think that's where I'm leaning to. Yeah. Um, Hector? I was going to add that uh, trying to do a meeting on Labor Day, that's the opening weekend for all the orchids, at, or orchards, and there's also a festival that's going to be planned on that day, orchards, I'm not saying that right, sorry, um, I'll blame my sickness for that, uh, but it might be a little too much trying to hold all those events at the same time. Yeah, I don't think anyone's arguing that we should do Labor Day. <laughs> um, it, that would just put the, the election on Rosh Hashanah, which is yeah, like, which is, also yeah. which doesn't work. Yep. Yeah. All right, so... Um, Mr. Salvi has his hand up. Oh. Let me, let me allow him to unmute. I'm glad he's on, because I was going to say Hello, we Mr. have to Sally. defer and speak to him. Well, he's still muted. Oh, he asked him to unmute. Okay. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, just keep in mind, um, I don't think this special is going to be quite as simple as some of the others have been. Um, in addition to the school question, we have all of the more complicated charter uh, committee articles, and the planning board, no doubt, is going to have some stuff to chew. At least that's what I've heard about so far. That's all I wanted to add. Mm. Um. I hear that. I just, we're not dealing with the budget at this town meeting either. I just, I, so the town meetings that 
I can remember going long on nights were ones that we that were money money. Like I mean, not that the school is not going to be money, school but is money. the school is going to be money. So but board is muted. But oh, we're muted. How are we muted? No. Oh. All right. No one heard what I said. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how we muted. Um, no. So what I was going to say, or what I was saying, is I think that even though it is still going to be a meaty meeting. It's not going to be like our previous Monday night, Tuesday night meetings that had the full budget and stuff in them and, and could potentially take longer. Um, I feel like I would personally prefer to do a Monday town meeting. Um, yes, Denise. So can I ask to table this? Yep. So I can regroup with the town clerk, yep. um, further discuss it with the moderator and talk to the other two towns yep. and see, um, and perhaps the school committee, mm -hmm. um, if there is any wiggle room okay. in that. Um, okay. I don't I've, think there is with the September 20th date, but yeah. um, I will just, like I said, I just found this out last night. Yeah. So I was going to um, say, it, when you go back to them, make it clear that I think our biggest concern is that it is Rosh Hashanah and that, and that, it, that's, that's the concern. Yeah. Uh, if that's what I'm hearing from everyone. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I will come back okay. on May 9th Great. with new with the revised proposed Perfect. date schedule. So we will move. Cool. Yes, please. All right, thank you. Um, all right, we're going to move into the warrant then. Um, so there were some specific articles that folks sent in that they would like to request, uh, discuss. Yeah. And... Um, I think there may be some others that board members want to talk about before you go through and um, vote on things. Okay. So, All right. Um, let's go in order. Ellen, do you want to talk about Article 53? Or do you have questions or do you want to? Um, yeah. Now I have to remember. It was funny because when I read through them again today, I didn't even think about 53. So it seems I can remember <laughs> So that was the green. Now, now I remember. <laughs> okay. Um, I am concerned that um, they're asking for a lot of money and, and they haven't spent a lot of money. And, and frankly, none of our committees that this kind of budget. And I, I'm, I just think um, they need to be a little more um, scotch with their money. Is this, oh, sorry. Can I, I, is this for a consultant to be able to put, like, a marketing person to be able to put the actual plan together? So, if I can, they did send me their budget, so okay. I can share that. Um, yeah, so, the, if you'll remember, when they, they were created, one of their primary responsibilities um, is the creation of a climate action plan. And so, the majority, if not all, of this funding and the current year funding that is still out there, um, let me just see if I can make this bigger. I have to close the captioning because I can't see anything on my screen. Um, so I can do it here. Um, just bear with me one moment. Oh, it's a little too big. So that's a little bit better. Um, so it breaks down their request. Um, the majority of the, the funding would be spent on a graphics designer um, to actually take the data that in the research that they're doing and actually put it together. If you look at some of the surrounding towns, they put um, very interactive booklets together. There's charts, there's graphs, there's um, all sorts of things uh, dissecting the data. Um, when I met with representatives from the Green Advisory Committee, we talked about printing. Um, they actually had a much higher number of documents that they were going to books that they were going to have printed. I sort of advised them against that. Mm -hmm. um, I said, you know, you are the Green Advisory Committee. We don't want to be printing all these books if we can get it in <laughs> digital format. Um, so they did cut it down to 100 copies um, for boards, committees, and departments to have one and then have some available. Um, and then they have the breakdown. So... Um, some of it is on outreach and stuff like that, but as you'll see, um, the primary funding is for the graphics work. Um, and I know they so they were soliciting quotes from surrounding companies and trying to get the best price that they could to produce this. Um, I think without some professional assistance and actually putting it together, um, you know, they have the data, but 
trying to consolidate it and putting it into the actual plan and um, would be a little difficult for them. So, okay. um, so that was the budget that they sent to me when they submitted the request, um, knowing that they still had funding from this year mm -hmm. that has not been spent. So I see. And, and I think Denise, you had shared this with me when I first raised it. And, and I just think that that's, uh, a ridiculous amount of money for graphic design. I, I I work with graphic designers all the time, and I'm sure Megan does as well. Yeah. You're getting an awful good, high quality. I mean, we just don't need that level of of expense. I don't think. And um, yeah. I just I just feel like it's it's they have they're sitting on fourteen thousand dollars now. If it was for a consultant, I would have been more willing. But I just think what I'm seeing them also they can't spend town money on you know lawn signs to push a, a warrant article, I don't believe, which is in there as well. Small money, but they need to understand that. I don't think you can do that. No, but, and, yeah. and the, the money for advertising is not for warrant articles. That is to um, sort of, they are talking about sort of some climate fairs and things like that. Um, but they had stretch, stretch code lawn signs I think that is for a warrant article or something is what it says. I mean, it's small money, so I'm not too worried about it, but... Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to, you know, get bogged down in the nickels, but I, yeah. I do feel like that's, you know, that's just too much money for printing or for design. Okay. So I would cut that in half. So that's why I, that's why I wanted to raise it. Um, do you have any questions? I have no experience with graphic design. Um, I think this group does great work, and I want to support them. I just, has anyone asked? I mean, can we ask them? I mean, I have no idea. Yeah. I just, I can I can see what Ellen's concern is. We're talking about doubling. Like, they're asking for double. And I can see in, in the layout, like, why they need that money, obviously, to make up for it. But on its face, it looks like they're just... They haven't spent the money, and then we're asking the town to put the same amount of money into their coffers. Well, because they've yeah. sounds like they've they have a quote for this production, yeah. and I mean, have they? Did they ask several? You know, my question is: Did they? Did they ask several people, or did they just go to somebody? They like right? Is there like a bid? It's not. It doesn't follow state bidding. It will. It will. I mean, in order to actually sign a contract, there has to be a procurement process. Okay. But yeah. um, I believe, um, and I'm not entirely sure, um, but I believe they said that they contacted some of the surrounding towns to find out who uh, they worked with on their specific documents, their mm -hmm. climate action plans, and contacted them for proposals. And just got, these were rough estimates based on okay. how much time they thought they would need, um, you know, what, what goes into the climate action plan that they would need graphics assistance with and so mm -hmm. on. And obviously the whatever's not spent folds back into their account. Right. So, okay. Hector has um, his hand up. Um, yep. Yeah. Hector? So I'm a little confused on this. I understood that this money was to create publication material to dis explain all climate action plan as well as the um, whatever the warrant article that they're going to have at town meeting is. But obviously this is for after the town meeting. Is it to educate about the proposed new methods to build the housing on uh, Red Acre Road or Athens Lane, I mean, and Things and how to improve building construction for town government buildings. Is that what all this publication is for? So I don't know that because this was submitted. I, I didn't submit this. This was submitted from the committee. So um, I don't know their specifics on their advertising breakdown and what it's for. But yes, you're right. It's This is... Um, but their budget that they had was for the remaining 13000 plus the 14000 requests. So, you know... Perhaps in their budget they had funding that was going to be spent before town meeting um, and sort of whittled down that 13. I don't know. I can certainly follow up with Carol Lynn, who is the select board uh, representative on the Green Advisory Committee and the one who's actually would speak to this um, at town meeting. Okay. I have a procedural question. Mm -hmm. um, is, is it possible for them to change the amount? I mean, usually we have something that's worded so that there can be some, I mean, aside, 
amendments aside, that there can be some discussion and, and a possible uh, change to the article. Is there the possibility in the time we have left before town meeting for them to to propose a different, more palatable, smaller number? I mean, so they could they could bring forward an amendment to town meeting to lower the number. Okay. You Just can't really increase that. the number because it's out of the scope of, you yeah, know, no, but no, you can lower the number. <laughs> you can always lower a number. Right. Okay. The, on town meeting floor. Yeah. And, okay. Maybe great if they could keep looking. Maybe see how they can... I also just as a procedural, I guess, question. We don't have to. I wasn't necessarily saying we need. You know, I wanted to the board to vote against this or anything. I yeah. just wanted to raise it as questions. So I didn't know if we're going through this for for select board support or not on various articles or just to. I think flesh out. I think tonight was just for qu any questions. Well, it's and both. Then, and or and this if has there to go was, to print in the morning. Right. <laughs> Okay. I don't get another week. If, if we want it in the war, it there, needs to be. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. Yes. I'm just looking at Acton's climate action plan, mm -hmm. and it is 122 pages of graphics and charts. <laughs> yeah. And Concord's, is, Concord's is pretty. And it's yeah. not an insignificant effort. So yeah. I don't yeah. want to second guess them. I think we should. Uh, I'm willing to support it. I used to work in graphic design. And it's very hard work. Oh <laughs> yeah, for sure. Everything too late. And well, it's a lot of data. Just yeah, it's a lot of data, data yeah. and how you and image it. Has it has to be right. Yeah, because right. it just has to be right. All right. Is it something we want to take a vote on, or we want to? Does to anyone want to vote on it, or just have it be? Um, I'm not hearing anyone jumping out of their chairs. So I'm gonna move on to 63. Um, I wanted to talk about the, or I felt like it was important that we talk about um, the Lower Village Business District as this is something that I think we need to talk about. Um, or it, it feels like it's something that we should probably take a position on. I don't have to. Hector be. and Ellen are both nodding along with I, you. Just I, okay. To <laughs> I was like, I don't have to. <laughs> um, I will uh, open it up to that. I will not comment on it yet. <laughs> if anybody wanted to say something. Well, um, I'll, I'll, go ahead, Hector. You go yep. first. I did have a question up there. If I understood correctly, the last the decision was that between this and the drive-through amendment, if both pass, drive-throughs would be allowed in the uh, other business districts in Stowe, but not in the lower village. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. If Article 63 passes, it is an entirely separate district, which would not be the business district. It would be the lower village business district, a separate district. And up to this point, there is no information about any amendment that might have been proposed for or will be brought up at town meeting. We have received nothing to date. Okay. I just want to make sure that people that signed up for the drive through petition were aware of this is what was happening or what they were signing up for, even though I totally support the uh, Lower Village Business District. So the attorney that represents the group that put the citizens' petition forward is aware. Uh, the moderator reached out to him and asked that if there be any amendments to get them in advance so he can review them, but um, nothing has been submitted. Great. Yeah, I would encourage us to support the uh, new rules for the Lower Village Business District. I think it will be great for the town. I know there's a lot of concern about the water, but I know the new... I don't think keeping the rules, laws as they are, or changing them is going to do anything for the water. Whatever new construction has to go in there is going to include a water evaluation, and that's no matter what the rules are. That's all I've got to say. Okay. Ellen? Um, so I, I was trying to just, I know I had seen on the website that there were some updates and I haven't been able to 
going to their more more recent hearings. Are there any changes since well since the meeting when we attended? Because uh, it sounded like there there was still tweaking some of the wording or whatever, and I just was wondering if anything that we need to know about. Because I'm sorry, I haven't been up on it. So I'll be honest, stuff has changed, but I don't believe anything is substantive. Substantive. Um, Town Council made a bunch of changes yesterday and today worked with Valerie to make some um, legal changes and clarification changes. Um, I don't believe anything major change since you all reviewed this with the planning board. Okay. Anything significant and anyways. The um, the borders, and maybe Hector, that's why you're raising in. there was the whole question around what's included and in, you know, where the, where the line is being drawn, particularly on the western border. Um, I'm just, did that, has anything changed on that? Nope. So the map is, um, in the appendix of what the new district will be. Um, yeah, I can share my screen. Let me pull it up. I don't even think I have the warrant open, but let me pull that up. While you do that, I just wanted to point out, and I wasn't sure if Ellen was aware of it, that it was changed to where there's no longer a zero buffer zone in this to existing residential uh, buildings, but they modified it to say a 50 foot buffer zone to existing residential places okay. in the district. That's, which that's be brought to that's, 30. Okay, so that's, I mean, that's that's a significant improvement, I think, because that was one of my concerns. And I know with okay. Meeting House, that was a concern. So, you, Denise, oh, oh, they're now getting to the maps. I mean, yeah, I'll yeah. share. I'm just getting there, so I'll share it right now. I just had to pull it up. It's a large document and takes a few seconds to actually open. Yeah. <laughs> so currently, this includes the the lot that is um, Ms. Ms. Hildebrandt's lot because there's a separate article for that. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so this that. would be the proposed district. Um, which is pretty much from the Presty property to Miss Hildebrand's property um, on both sides of the street in that vicinity. Mm -hmm. This would be the new Lower Village Business District. Mm -hmm. okay. And kind of as a side note, if Miss Hildebrand's article passes would matter whether this is approved or not no nope. because we would um have the motion for that article reference a revised map which would exclude the parcel right here okay great can you see that oh, can i Well, I agree we should take a position. I mean, I have an opinion on what the position, I have my own position. Mm -hmm. I don't know how the rest, it sounds like the rest of the board would be similar. So, I don't know what, what, you're, what you would like us to do. I, I think we should take a position. I will, um, I, I could not vote against this, having been the subcommittee chair of the Lower Village Revitalization Subcommittee. <laughs> like, this is exactly what we had been working towards. Um, but I need to say again, I am very concerned about the citizens' petition and the lack of... If the citizens' petition passes and the Lower Village one fails. We have now opened ourselves up for 117 full of drive throughs I mean, full of drive throughs There is a bank that is empty that doesn't have to be a bank. It's already got the infrastructure for a drive through I, that is my biggest fear with all of this and why I said, if you allow for one drive through in this district, yeah, it's curtains. If you allow for one drive through, then maybe the citizen's petition doesn't pass. 
Like if there's an amendment for that, it is, that is me in the spirit of trying to compromise so that we do not end up with the worst case scenario. Um, so while I am fully in favor of this, I would be doing myself a disservice <laughs> if I didn't say that the citizen's petition scares me for the reason that I worry that people will vote against this or they will vote for the citizen's petition because they want one thing to happen. But what's the alternative? Not, what's the alternative? The alternative, the only alternative that I would see would be an amendment on town meeting floor to amend this article to allow for one in the district in that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's... However, I'm not saying that's what I'm proposing. <laughs> I'm not saying that that's anything. I mean, I, I what we're doing here tonight is that. But I just feel like if I didn't... I, I needed to at least put that forward. Because it is genuinely a concern of mine. Um, that, that we're not seeing the forest for the trees in that situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay. That we, we could open ourselves up to being Washington Street in Hudson that has multiple, you, do you know, it's, and that's not what I think anybody wants. Um, not the people who have been working on this, but we talk about, you know, we are a drive through 117 is people drive through there. Like that, that's what happened. And we, and while we want people to be able to stop, um, and so I don't have a, I don't have a solution. I, well, I just wanted to. Reminder to is that everything I believe goes through site plan approval or what's the approval Yes, process? that's the thing. Yes. Everything has to go yeah. through. And, and so having sat as board. an associate member on the planning board, there are conditions like up, you know, there's a million conditions for, for approving a special permit. So. Yeah. so it's not as dour as you might think, although your comment, your observations are excellent. I. It's not going to, it, it, the citizens' petition is not going to allow for a like we can't just have a thousand liquor stores in town because we can only have so many because there's a condition that ties that to population, right? Um. Anyway, that, that's all I'm saying. I we can move forward and 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 take a vote to support this if we want to, and I'm happy to do that, and I'm happy to, but I didn't want to. At least not or, say. Or we don't have to take a vote. No, because I think the spirit of it, I I personally would be willing to vote on this. I, you know, I do want to support them in that, but. My sense is that yeah, all of us are in support of it. So I, I think we can. We I think we can. It? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, How we feel. Hector? Um, based on what you were saying, if I understand correctly, if the lower village business district doesn't pass and the drive-throughs do pass, it would still be, the planning board would still have some control to say, yeah, you can have a drive-through, but it needs to empty out into the parking lot of the Stoke Plaza, not onto 117 or something like that, correct? They absolutely right. could. It's just the number of them mm -hmm. is the is what I'm saying. Right. That okay. that's That's all I'm pointing out is that, is that the citizens one? petition is changing it to say that we just allow it. Right. So I think this So there I just would be yeah, make sorry. an observation yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. that this is a conversation that I hope will happen on town meeting yes, floor. Absolutely. Because the people that would really like to have a drive through for whatever reason need to think about the ramifications of their request and the mm -hmm. way it's been phrased. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the citizens petition actually says subject to special permit. So yeah, they're not it's it's not yes. putting it in the allowed use table. It's making it allowed by special permit. So mm -hmm. um Thank you. So there would still be a process that the planning board would be heavily involved in. Right, but the plan, should it pass. But the planning board couldn't say you can't have this. Because it would be an allowable use. I guess that's my argument is like yes, it will still have to go through special permitting absolutely would have to go through traffic studies like it's not just we're going to get it happening but it's just that there's there's an infinite number of them that could happen as opposed to is is all i was trying to say one of the um, things ellen has a oh, she's 
Oh, you, Courtney, you can keep talking. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, this is perhaps germane to this, but I, you know, I think people should know that probably some large portion of the planning board would quit if this passes because they're so, you know, they're, my understanding is that many, you know, there are a number of people on the planning board that that feel strongly that that's not the direction they would like to, right. that, you know, they've been working in, a, in this other direction and mm -hmm. it, um, they work really hard. I mean, they're five-year terms and they, you know, people serve for, for multiple terms and it's just not something to be taken lightly. I mean, I think... I think there's their work is so complex that it's hard to to think about for a lot of the rest of us, and it's just like public safety. We should be so grateful for them because they are doing this long range thing that um, is really important, and it, it's um, I'm I'm strongly in favor of this, and I will defend it. <laughs> And I, you know, I, I think that, that that was something that, you know, when we talked about it before, that this is for the long-term kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, and that's the part that we don't, we, we regular citizens don't have to think about, don't, don't often think in terms of how to make things available so 10 years from now something can change. So I think I, that is the reason I support it. But I also will say, uh, and Megan, I actually, you know, would have liked to see that same compromise because I think that would have been a better strategy. But, you know, that said, um, we also aren't Washington Street. If we had even a quarter of the number of <laughs> that Hudson has in, on Washington Street, we'd have a whole different kind of issue. We'd have a whole different conversation going right now. So, um, but, but, but I, I don't want to, I mean, I don't want to make light of it because I, you know, um, I, I wouldn't mind seeing one drive through somewhere that wasn't, Papuccinos because of that that specific space is just the worst you know mm -hmm. so that's all I'll say but I totally support it and I think I think it is important that the select board vote even if we couldn't I mean I think we probably will but even if we couldn't get a unanimous vote because this is a really critical leadership moment mm -hmm. and and the town I mean I totally agree with what Courtney said the planning board has worked way too hard on this to not back them up mm -hmm. so yeah and and, and with good product yep um, all right. I'm ready to take a motion okay. on Article 63. There are no motions on your sheet, so don't leave that. You don't have to leave that. <laughs> 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 uh, Madam Chair, I uh, move that the select board... Can I say recommends approval on this article? <laughs> Please. <laughs> recommends <laughs> approval on this article. That's Article 63. Yeah. Second. I, um, okay, all in favor, Ms. Sturgis? Aye. Mr. Costanzas? Aye. Ms. Eggman Clark? Aye. Ms. Fresha? Aye. The chair votes aye, so that is unanimous. So, great, we recommend approval on it. Um, I just needed to play the devil's advocate <laughs> on it, is all. Really important. <laughs> I just think it's really important. But I really do. Listen, I, I too was an associate member on the planning board for multiple years. And it, yes, it is a insane amount of work and I really respect all of it. Um, okay, Hector, you wanted to talk about article 67. Well, we kind of sort of just did. Oh, great, right. that was the citizen position. That's the drive through. Great. Yeah, the citizen position. Well, and the question is, did you want us to take a vote on it? Uh, no, I just wanted, I? I was really no. looking to find out if there was any proposed amendments. You know, what you mentioned, Megan, about Washington Street and Hudson, I've been driving down Washington Street in my mind trying to think of any drive through that actually empties out on Washington Street and Hudson, and I can't think of a single one. Yeah. They either Duncan, empty out Duncan, into the parking Duncan, lot. Duncan does, I think. Duncan, and Duncan does. The one by... CVS and Bacon's? No. Is that a, is that There's a, another that, one in that, towards town. Tower Road. Tower Road. I don't know the name of the street, but yeah. Okay. It's towards town. Closer to the bike town. Mm. Right? Tower Street. That might be because I'm thinking uh, the Honeydew, the McDonald's, the Burger King, the Duncan by uh, CVS. Mm hmm. We don't have to. Oh, we don't need to go through those. Yeah. 
<laughs> but yes, yes, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, so now we need to take a vote to approve the warrant. Well, are there any other articles that people oh, have questions else? or comments? Oh, sorry. Or? I think Ellen, three of us Ellen has a few others. Oh, you have other ones? So, yeah, sorry. Um, one is, is a, a little bit just um, for on the, the regional agreement um, document, which actually isn't in the warrant because they didn't ask you to print it. Not that we wanted that 65-page thing there. But um, I guess I, I wondered uh, if, if it would be helpful if the select board um, recommended approval just to get people less concerned about it. I mean, I, I don't know if it's... You know, if people are even going to think twice about it, they'll say, oh, we're making changes, fine, and then move on. But um, having been on the committee, you know, what's, what's the subject? I'm too close to it's Article it's 41. Article 41. Oh, it's the regional. 41, we had a presentation on it in one of our meetings. I think yeah. Ellen's right. It would be helpful, and it's not going to hurt anything if we just approve it. So, And just so folks know, um, on our website, under the select board page, there's a town meeting information and warrants tab on the left. We've started to populate that with um, any handouts. And so the regional agreement is actually linked to there as well. So if people are looking for all of the presentations will be there along with the warrant once it's finalized, um, recommendation letters, everything is in that one location. Um, so people can easily find it through that page as well, the full um, regional agreement. Okay. Um, all right. I will. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Nope. Nope. Do you want to? vote on that? Yeah, I was going to take a motion on it, but do you want to say anything first? No? Okay. Madam uh, Chair, I move that the select board recommend approval of Article 41. Second. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Mr. Costanzas? Aye. Ms. Sturgis? Aye. Ms. Hageman clark Aye. Ms. Russia? Aye. And the chair votes aye, so that is unanimous. And then I had just one more, which was, um, it's Article 50, um, and I'm sort of speaking as a representative of the Capital Planning Committee. Um, capital Planning approved all the, the other capital articles. This one hadn't been listed as a capital article, even though it actually meets the criteria for capital. Hmm. And we um, unanimously voted against it, partly because... Um, there wasn't a, a firm or a firm bid on what what the money was going to be used for, and also it's a second part of a CPA uh, CPC project, and they hadn't gone to CPC um, to get the second round of funding, and we felt that there was no rush um, that it should uh, it should go back to CPC to get the additional funds they needed. Oh dear. So, I, that's more just for information. I just thought it would um, mm -hmm. it would be important for the select board to know that. And if you had questions, let me know. Okay. Um, Can I ask a question of yeah. Ellen, since, since you're representing capital planning? Um, yeah. The money for the town building water system repairs and upgrade was unanimously voted against by capital planning. Could you give some background on that? Um, the 750000 to replace the system that runs this building, the library, the town hall... Why am I not seeing it on our list? Um, Article 38. It's uh, on the list that Steve sent me this morning. It was listed that it was unanimously oh, against. You're, you're right. That's right. It did. Um, okay. So let me, I'm going to just review my notes because I don't want to speak out of turn since I'm supposed to be representing them. Um, well, first there was a, a number of questions um, that uh, we didn't, the, the proposal that we had didn't have where the number came from. And so we, uh, we did get back and got some answers back from, I think it was from Frank around, um, are we, we're paying for the new wells. That's fine. Um, but, but where did the 750 come from? And we, we specifically asked if you could give us a breakdown and you could not. And the, the, um, capital planning felt like if we can't justify, if we don't have justification for 750, we shouldn't approve it until we know exactly what the money's for from. So, and that's basically, um, it seemed like it was, you know, it did need to be done, but but since we didn't have the specific number, um, we were opposed. So, I mean, I still will be advocating town meeting because when the library is dug up, we need to replace the water system. We have no choice. The, right. the mains go right under the building, so we will have to address well, that some way or another. One of the questions is, is 750 enough, essentially? I mean, right. that was one of the questions, given given what we were hearing. Right. So. Yeah, so we may, I mean, we may look to do some engineering work 
Um, a lot of it is unknown until we get into the ground um, and actually see what needs to be replaced. Um, if we're able to um, take the church and the private residence off and put them on a private well, um, then there's a significant length of pipe that does not need to be replaced. So there are definitely a lot of um, things that are still unknown. Uh, it's just timing wise with the library project. If we, if we did this in phases, we would have to replace the system because DEP is going to make us replace the system without a plan in place. So, um, so I, I will still advocate on behalf of, um, and that was one of the reasons why I am recommending that we borrow for that. So we're not putting aside cash. We're borrowing only what is needed. Um, so, uh, but I appreciate that. I wasn't sure if that was, I figured that was the reason why you voted again. Not you personally, but the committee <laughs> yeah. voted against it. Um, I just wanted clarification so I could sort of plan how I will address that. Yeah. And there, yeah, there is no doubt that it needs to happen and that especially with the timing of the library, it would make sense. Um, and we particularly, I would say, at least the majority of us supported certainly taking the two, the private residents and the church off of it, you know, dig them the wells and then they're on it. But then there was questions about liability around PFAS because it's still in the neighborhood. And so. Okay. No, um, I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. Okay. That's all I got. Like, nothing else. All right. Um, are we ready to vote on the warrant then? All right. I'll take a motion. Madam Chair. Did you have anything? Nope. Okay. I move to approve the 2023 annual town meeting warrant as presented at this meeting. Second. Any further discussion? Is it with the additional motions that are the support that the select board that's going to be added, right? Yes. As, yeah. as Because those aren't yeah. substantive. It's just the notes. So I will add those okay. um, two articles. I didn't know if that has to be in the vote or not, but I'm fine. So, okay. All right. Um, all in favor, Ms. Sturgis? Aye. Mr. Costanzas? Aye. Ms. hageman clark Aye. Ms. Fresha? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That is unanimous. We have a warrant. Okay. All right. And it will be sent in the morning to the printer. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Um, please talk to us about the allocation of the remaining ARCA funds. So this obviously came up very quickly last week um, after I received a phone call from um, Laurie Trahan's office. Um, so I included the documentation. He sent the email. We spoke on the phone. I, you know, the likelihood of this happening, I think, is slim, but it is a proposal that has come out from the House Speaker mm. to reduce the debt ceiling as to what they call claw back the unallocated ARPA funds. Um, so we sit at $331,000 and change that has been unallocated. Mm -hmm. um, everything that we've sort of committed to a bucket or a project is considered allocated, just not spent. Mm -hmm. um, so my... My thought would be is that the board just votes to allocate it into the bucket that's sort of the discretionary bucket that still allows us to proceed as we have been, mm -hmm. but then it considers those funds sort of spoken for mm -hmm. um, should they decide to try and recover any of that unallocated funding. Okay. Um, as I said, I'm not, it, to me, it really doesn't matter where we put it. If we put it under the town administrative discretionary, it's just, it's not really, it could be used for sort of non-traditional capital. It could be used to finish these projects. Mm -hmm. It was the only sort of what I'll call discretionary of the funds that we've already set up. Mm -hmm. So that was why my recommendation was to just move it under there, okay. continue to spend it as we have been, um, mm -hmm. as needed to finish these projects and close out some of these things. But it would then be considered allocated. Okay. Makes sense to me. Anybody have any questions about that? Concerns? Good um, move. Yeah. Question? Yeah. Um, it's just the TA discretionary fund is less than, well, at least two of the big ones. And so I was wondering, would it look, now it would say $431,000. Um, should, should it be split, uh, like to capital or something? And I know it's just, at this point, we're just trying to randomly assign it, but. So it doesn't matter, when I do the reporting, the way the reporting with the um, federal government works is, um, it's those first three we have as separate projects, then everything else gets put into one bucket. So even though it's broken up here, what we call capital projects, the TA discretionary and other, mm -hmm. all get reported as one dollar amount. So for reporting, we only have four buckets. I see. For my reporting and for what you've approved, I've broken it down further for our purposes. But mm -hmm. for the federal government, it's only four buckets that I actually report. Got it. Okay. 
then I that's fine then. Great. Any other questions? Hector? I know this is an unpopular opinion. I'm not even sure I myself support it, but what about the idea of if by some miracle they actually do decide to claw back on these things, we let them do it. If there is such a... I know what's going on in D.C. is more political than anything about fiscal responsibility, but at the same time, I'm thinking we have financial problems. Would we be doing our part by not allocating it and let the federal government take the funds back? Like I said, I'm not even sure I support it, but it's, I thought it would be worth discussing. And, I, and my, my <coughs> response I'll be, um, is that there's an awful lot of unfunded mandates that the federal government gives us, and we don't get those, that, those dollars ever. So this has been a rare opportunity to get money, particularly for capital projects, mm -hmm. I'd say. Um, and especially because we're a small town mm -hmm. in a relatively small state mm -hmm. um, compared to the rest of the country. So that's why that would be my first response to like, yeah, no, I think we should hold on to keep this money. <laughs> um, all right. Then I will take a motion. Madam Chair, I move to allocate the remaining ARPA funds to the town administrator's discretionary account. Second. Um, any further discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Ms. Sturgis? Aye. Mr. Costanzas? Aye. Ms. Hageman Clark? Aye. Ms. Fresha? Aye. And chair votes aye. That is unanimous. Great. All right, meeting minutes. Any questions, concerns? Can I just admit that I figured Joyce does such a good job, I, I don't read them as carefully as I wasn't there. You know? it's, it's the Joyce and Phoebe tag team that, you know, Joyce writes them, Phoebe oh, reads them yes, and corrects. I, I it's, don't want to, that's right. It's the team that right, they do an amazing job. They do. Yeah. Yes. They so. really do. I'll be honest, I don't even read them anymore. I used to in the beginning. <laughs> now I just trust that you all... What, what happens is what's in there is accurate. Well, I read them. I did I wasn't them. there. And I <laughs> thought they were great because it filled me in on some stuff that happened, but I don't know right. a lot Same of the terms here. of accuracy. Yep. Yeah. So. Same here, since neither one of us read them. I did meet them, and they look great. Yes. <laughs> that, I'm moved to accept the meeting minutes of uh, April 11th, 2023, as drafted. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, Ms. Sturgis. Aye. Mr. Costanzas. Ms. Hageman Clark? Aye. Ms. Fresha? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That is unanimous. All right. Anybody have questions, discussions on correspondence? I'll, I, I'm going to comment on my correspondence. Sure. Um, I was just extremely disappointed with our finance committee hearing. Um, it, uh, there's a there's a big balance between not reading every article and having absolutely no conversation. Um, all the I understand the finance committee has meetings where they have the conversation, but the whole point of a, town, a public hearing is for the public to be able to hear what the summary of the committee's position is on the various articles, and uh, there was none of that, and I was I'm just extremely disappointed. So okay. I hope that the future finance committee will rethink how they handled the public hearing. And I'll add to that and say that I was, I won't say I was disappointed because I didn't know enough to be disappointed, but I was confused. I went into that hearing expecting that articles would be discussed and we'd have an opportunity to ask questions and was surprised to see two minutes into the meeting, the forum was over and all we did was sit and listen to the pin com discuss, debate the articles. Um, I was not there. I cannot comment on that. Um, all right. Any other? Can I ask a yes, question absolutely. on um, the EDIC yes. group resignation? Yep. Um, I, I would not ask to do this before town meeting, but mm -hmm. at some point we should discuss what we'd like to do with that committee absolutely. Um, going forward. I did receive three applicants for the vacancies. Okay. Um, the three applicants had not attended any meeting, so I was going to have them attend a meeting before I made a recommendation, but then the committee resigned. So uh, okay. we do have folks. I don't know if they would still want to serve, but um, okay. I think it's worth a discussion at one of our upcoming meetings. Okay. That sounds great. Can I ask 
a question on this. Um, we had just gone through the whole statement and with their input, mm -hmm. was this a result of that just net dislike? No. I, all we received was the letter all. that said they all resigned. So I don't know. Um, their meetings are not televised, so I don't know what took place or what the discussion was. Okay. Well, it's unfortunate. It is. Um, it is. And, and I would, I mean, I'd ask it for it to be on a future agenda, though it'll be after time meeting, so I won't be here, but I just, you know, it would be nice to at least invite them in to have that conversation. Um, maybe they'll feel more willing to talk uh, now that they're not members, but I think that, especially as we move forward with the, if we f move forward with the committee, given all the work, you know, with the mission statement being done, right? Uh, it'd be nice to know how to avoid some of those things. You can still come after town meeting. You know? <laughs> You'll see me every week. <laughs> I bet. Um, any other questions, concerns? For Ellen? Well, I just I just want to say that I agree with Ellen. I mean, it's nice not to leave things unresolved um, if possible. Yes. All right. Anything else? Madam Chair, I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Ms. Sturgis. Aye. Mr. Costanzos. Aye. Ms. Hageman Clark. Aye. And Ms. Fresha. Aye. All right. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody.